My name is Pastor Marlon Curtin. This is the Rockway Cathedral. Uh, welcome, welcome to our Sunday service. Welcome to our Sunday service. If you like what you see here, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Our foundational scripture is Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. Matthew 7, verses 24 and 25. We at the Rockway Cathedral say we're building God's kingdom in you. Be blessed. It's July 7th, 2024. Welcome to online worship at the Rockaway Cathedral. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Whether you're just having a look or seeking a place to worship, we are delighted to have you here. And though we may not be able to meet together physically, that is not going to stop us from rallying together spiritually. Join us online for a time of worship and a message from Pastor Marlon Curtin. Join us in experiencing the joy of singing to the Lord with the gospel duo, Melody and Harmony.
for guiding my steps. I want to thank you, Lord. You are always there. Thank you, Lord, for being there. Thank you, Lord. I know you're always there. pray. Lord, we thank you, though, for your goodness. We thank you, though, for your mercy. We thank you, though, for your son, Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that you give us, you give us an abiding price. You give us pastors and leaders. You give us pastors and leaders a heart to serve. That you give us pastors and leaders a heart and a heart to serve, not just in the church, not just for church members, not just in the church, not just for church members, not just for our family, not just for people that we know, but Lord, let us reach out to those that we don't know, to those that we've never met. And if we have an opportunity, if we have an opportunity, if we have an opportunity to help somebody, give us the heart and the mind to help people that need help. Pray these things in your son's precious name. Amen. Today's scripture of the day is taken from Luke chapter 10, verses 36 and 37 in the Christian Standard Bible Version. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The one who showed mercy to him, he said. Then Jesus told him, go and do the same. The Rockaway Cathedral is a nonprofit organization that is seeking to win souls for the Lord in the Far Rockaway community. We especially want to make a difference in the lives of those who are often disenfranchised. However, we need your support to get there. Your act of kindness can be a lifesaver for someone. Remember, richness is not necessary, but willingness is. Please visit our website at www.therockawaycathedral.com. Click on the blue Donate tab at the bottom of the page, then click Make a Donation. We are also asking that you continue to support us by viewing our service once a week. We're now on Cash App. You can send your donations to Cash Tag Rockaway Cathedral. You can also donate at our website www.therockawaycathedral.com We thank you for your partnership and continued support. Good morning, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to Rockaway Cathedral. My name is Pastor Mark. So welcome, welcome to our Summer Revival Series. Welcome to our Summer Revival Series. Every message, every message this month in July will be part of our Summer Revival Series. Um, so, so today we're going to talk about you know being busy. Sometimes people get busy. You know, everybody gets busy sometimes. Sometimes you got things to do, places to go, people to see. But, but at all times, at all times, we should be mindful of others that need our help. That we should be should be mindful of others that may need our help. So today's message is called "Don't Forget the People." Today's message is called "Don't Forget the People," part of our summer revival series. Also. Don't forget, men's prayer meeting starts this Thursday. It starts this Thursday, July 11th, all the way through the end of August. We have prayer every week. We took our 4th of July, because we're on Thursday. But, but we do have, we will have, the prayer meeting will be continued by the men. The men will continue 
the prayer meeting this summer, starting July 11th. Look forward to seeing the brothers there. Information about the call and information about the call is on our website. So today's message is called Don't Forget the People, part of our summer revival series. Be blessed. Join us as we welcome the gospel duo Melody and Harmony.
Okay, good morning, good morning. Today's message is called Don't Forget the People. Today's message is called Don't Forget the People, part of our summary Bible series. The scripture can be found in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. Come bring me from the Christian Standard Bible. Please stand for the reading of God's holy word. Uh, today's message is called Don't Forget the People, part of our summer revival series. It began the reading of God's holy word. Then an expert in the law stood up to test him, saying, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? It was written in the law, he asked him. How do you read it? And he answered, Of the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with him, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He answered correctly, he told him. Do this, and you will, you will live. The one to justify himself, he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus took up the question and said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him, beat him up, and fled, leaving him half dead. The priest happened to be going down that road. When he saw him, he passed by on the other side. The same way a Levite, when he arrived at the place, and saw him pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan on his journey came up to him. And when he saw the man, he had compassion. He went over to him and bandaged his wounds, and pouring on olive oil and wine. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him. When I come back, I'll reimburse you for whatever extra you spend. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The one who showed mercy to him, he said. Then Jesus told him, Go and do the same. So far the scripture. Lord, speak to your servant today and bless your people. Jesus' name, amen. We have two points today. Point one is May 16, 2024. Uh, as some of you know, I'm an attorney, I do criminal law. And, you know, we, and I get very busy sometimes. We have lots of things to do. So that day, May 16, 2024, I had a bunch of things to do. I had to see two clients who were incarcerated see two clients who are incarcerated pending trial. One client is in New Jersey. The other one is in Brooklyn. And that would be normally not such a bad thing. You know, you drive from the office to New Jersey, then you drive from the office to Brooklyn, or vice versa. You could drive to Brooklyn first, it's probably easier, and then drive again to New Jersey. But it's not that easy. Now, first of all, driving to New Jersey from my office takes a while. It takes, takes like almost 90 minutes, and sometimes longer. This day took two hours because of traffic. So I went to Jersey first. The problem is I had an event in Manhattan in between. So I had an appointment with one client in the morning. I had an appointment with another client in the evening, and in the afternoon I had to be in Manhattan. And, you know, anybody who knows me knows I, I just don't like to drive to Manhattan. I just, I just don't do it. Now, driving to Brooklyn is hard enough, but Brooklyn is, you know, you can get there and get back. You know, it's even easy, but going to Manhattan is just very complicated. There's this tolls, there's all kinds of things, all kinds of things that have to happen. So a friend of mine was getting sworn in as a judge that day. A friend of mine was getting sworn in as a federal judge that day. So I, I felt that I should go to support her. I should go to support her. So I figured out the whole schedule. So I can go to New Jersey, see the client there. Uh, when I go to New Jersey, here's a secret. What makes it a little bit better, there's a rest stop on the way. You don't want to drive straight from New Jersey back to the office of Hempstead. There's like a nice little rest stop in New Jersey. It's maybe 15, 20 minutes from the jail. You stop there, you refresh, you can look very nice. Then you head on your way back. So I had all of these things I had to do. And I was, in a, I was in a hurry, I was in a rush. I wasn't really thinking about, other than the meetings that I had, I wasn't thinking about who's doing what or what's going on. But there, there, there was a problem, there was an issue. There was a problem, there was an issue. So, so the case in New Jersey um, have a pretty big team on it. There's a bunch of different people doing different things. So one of the people on the team, I says, hey, you know, I told him, you know, I always tell people my schedule who I'm working with that day so we all know what's going on. Because I don't want anybody to waste anybody's time. I don't want to waste their time. Everybody's busy. 
Some people have families. Some people have to go to different places. Some people have other jobs to go on. Right? They, and I don't want people to waste my time, and I don't want to waste anybody else's time. So I had to meet with one of my team members at the jail to visit the first client in New Jersey. I told him my schedule, and he has to go along with me to the rest stop because he knew I was going to Manhattan, and he would go his way to his other job. Now, anybody who knows me knows that I'm kind of an introvert. I don't really do socializing very well. I mean, I'm working on it, maybe, not really. Sorry, I'm not. Probably not. I probably should be. I do things when I have to. I'm, I'm an introverted person. You know, there's some people always out there doing stuff. That's not me. So, so what I would prefer to do is to go from New Jersey after the meeting, go to the rest stop, refresh. I have to make some calls as well and then go to Manhattan and then drive to Brooklyn because I was already a little bit uptight and do all that driving. I'm not one for driving. I don't like to drive a lot. So, but I had to do all three things because I had to be there to support uh, my colleague who was going on the third. I don't really know that many people who, who I, they started out as lawyers and it was judges. I mean, you know, obviously it happens, but it's, it's very rare that I know that person. So I have to know this person. I wanted to be there. The girls was there, her family was there. So, I wanted to get there, I didn't want to be late. And I didn't want to have to think about anything, but this guy, you know, he's, he's being a normal person. Normal people meet for lunch. Normal people have conversations about stuff all the time, in between jobs. He had somewhere to go, I had somewhere to go. We were together at this particular place, did our thing, but you know, but me, but me, you know, I just wanted to go. So in the middle of the conversation, I just said, okay, just just calm down. Just just calm down. Don't be annoyed at this person. Don't be angry at this person. Just calm down, have your lunch, and have the conversation. You know what time you have to leave. You know you're not gonna be late. You know how you're going to get there. You know where you're going to park. Everything is already lined up. I got my suit on. Right? The proper suit for the occasion. Nothing is, you know, unless something crazy. Nothing's, nothing looks like it's going wrong. The first meeting went well. The last meeting I know is going to go well. It's going to be good to see this person in and out and I'm out. But with me, I was so busy, so focused on what I had to do that I looked at this lunch conversation as an inconvenience to me because, I, you know, I was too busy. I was, I'm too busy trying to save the world, trying to save this client, trying to save that client, trying to support this colleague of mine. That the person right in front of me, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to spend the 30 minutes. That's all it is, about 30 minutes of a conversation that would not interrupt my day in any way. Day 16, 2024. Point two. Think about others. Now the scriptures, uh, look at the commentaries, the road from Jericho to Jerusalem. Let me get this right. The road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Well, it's the commentaries. It's about 17 miles. It's a, oft traveled road, Jerusalem to Jericho, but it's also a road that goes downhill about 3,000 feet. So you start up in Jerusalem and you go slowly down to Jericho, about 17 miles, 3,000 foot drop. And, and the other thing about this road is it's, it's, it's not the safest way to travel. I know the, the Romans were very good at building highways. And when they occupied a particular area, you know, they built, uh, you know, a couple of things they did. They made sure that there was water, fresh water. They made sure there were roads and made sure that the people had bread. In part, you know, make sure there was no uprisings, but also to make sure they could get their troops in and out pretty quick. So, so the Romans built a lot of roads, and I'm sure they had something to do, maybe had something to do with the building of this particular road. But this particular road was, was often filled with robbers. People oftentimes would get robbed on this road. 
and, and so the story that Jesus gave about the person that was robbed from going from Jerusalem to Jericho is a story that people were very familiar with. They understood this road. They understood that pathway and understood how dangerous that road could be. So, so when he talked about this story about the man getting robbed, they knew about that. They also knew, obviously, about the priesthood, the Levites, with the tribe in Israel, that were only only Levites could be priests. Only Levites could be priests. They were charged with the worship for the nation. They, they didn't get inheritance like the other tribes got this land, this land, this land. They didn't get that. They lived wherever the people were. They didn't have the inheritance. They were supported by the offerings and the tithes of the people because they were responsible for the worship of the people. All the ceremonies, right? all the forgiveness of covering of sins, that's what they called it. They were responsible for all of that. So here's this priest, the priest, somebody responsible for the worship of the nation walks right by, sees the guy in distress, sees the guy who was brutalized by a robber on a road that is known for that sort of thing, just walks right by. Doesn't even walk right by, walks on the other side, makes sure he intentionally avoids this man. And, and then it comes the Levite, the group, the tribe in Israel, from where all the priests came from. And this person is not necessarily in front doing this stuff, but this person is involved in some way and supporting the people who are out front, somehow supporting the priests, supporting the people who are out front. So it would be like a pastor, right? It would be the priest. And the Levite would be like a deacon or a trustee or somebody like that. Somebody involved in leadership of the church. Passed by on the other side. And then the Samaritan, somebody who's outside of the covenant, they, you know, without getting into it, the Jews and Samaritans don't get along. So this person who is outside of the covenant comes, sees this person in distress, and renders aid and assistance, so much so that he puts the guy in the hotel on his own dime and says, hey, I'll come back tomorrow. If this guy needs anything else, if you have to spend more money than I dropped off, I will reimburse you for any expenses. Just take care of this guy. Take care of my guy. The guy he just met, didn't even know him. And and Jesus was, was saying that who was the one who acted like a neighbor to this person? And and, and the person who came up with the story says, Oh, it's obviously the Samaritan. You know, but the answer is obviously the Samaritan. The man who went out of his way to help somebody in distress. That's the person who acted like a, a neighbor a good neighbor, loving thy neighbor as thyself. So, so this, this message is for me. This message is for pastors and leaders. This message is for pastors, bishops, trustees, deacons, and all the leadership of the church. Those who are in out front ministry and those who support those who are in out front ministry. Those who are in out front ministry, teaching, preaching the word of God, prophesying, laying on of hands, praying for people. Yet yeah, your name is on the poster. Your, your name is on the front of the church. Your name is somewhere in the website. There's a profile of you on the website, that person. And the people that help put together the flyer, help pay for the stuff on the front of the church, help put together the website. It's for you too. Those who are in upfront ministries, and those that support that. Jesus is telling us, Jesus is telling this group of people, including me, I know you're busy doing my work. I know I know you are you have a heart to do the right thing. You're out there preaching the gospel and discipling the nations, preaching the gospel and discipling the nations. But sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you have an opportunity. Sometimes you have an opportunity to, to do what? to relieve human suffering, address human suffering. And not that you can solve all things. Jesus said, Paul will always be with you. You can't solve all problems. You're not going to eliminate all poverty. You're not going to eliminate all war. You're not going to eliminate all hatred and fight. But but in the life that you live, at some point, you're going to walk by, you're going to see something that really looks bad. And, you, and sometimes you have to stay 
pick up the phone and call 911. Sometimes you have to stay, ask around, and render some sort of assistance. This is what Jesus is talking about. You know, you don't want to put yourself at risk because you know, you know, you don't want to. Women, women, you shouldn't put yourself at risk, right? Men, don't put yourself. Don't be Mr. Tough Guy and all this other stuff. But but if you have an opportunity to help a person without doing hurt and damage to yourself, and you still have an opportunity to get to where you need to go, or you can make some arrangements to push off for 20 minutes the thing that you have to do, Jesus is saying to you, eliminate and alleviate human suffering. So 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 the conversation that I had with the gentleman was not about human suffering. The person was not suffering. The person wasn't bleeding in front of me. Person wasn't broken in front of me, but but it's sometimes it just has to be nice to people. It's the least that I can do, you know. So so you know, seeing a guy in the street bleeding, you know, yeah, you call nine one one and wait for nine one one to get there. Or if you're a doctor, you render aid. If you're a nurse, you render aid until the professionals get there. So so that's the easy part. But sometimes it's just about having time for people in your life. Take the time to have that conversation. It's not gonna. Your schedule is not going to be disrupted by this. You're going to be there anyway. You, you know how to get to your next appointment. You're prepared for the next meeting. This past meeting went well because you were prepared for that meeting. So, so in your daily life, in your daily walk, you know, prepare for what you need to pray, prepare for. Pray for what you need to pray for. Right? Get the help that you need to have from the people who are helping you to go from one place to the next. But, but you know, but sometimes... You just have to be nice to people. It's not about, you know, somebody who's bleeding. Somebody who's bleeding. It's just about having a kind word in a conversation. A smile. Smiles are always free. Conversations are always free. And, and you know, this conversation was wonderful because, you know, people know, you know I love, love politics and history. And all we talked about was politics and history. And I learned things that I never knew before. Pastor, right, church leader. Sometimes in our, in our busy lives, we just have to do what we can to alleviate human suffering. And even if it's not necessarily something that looks like suffering, sometimes we just have to take the time to be nice to people that we work with, nice to people that we don't know, nice to people that we come across with in life. You, know, you don't want to run over somebody on your way to church. You don't want to step on somebody's foot as you're trying to get to the altar and not say sorry. So, you know, we it's it's good to be geared up for the Great Commission. But along the way, it's okay to have a conversation, to have a conversation or two along the way to your mission, along the way to your calling along the way to exercising the gifts that the Lord has given you, given you. This message is called, Don't Forget the People. This message is called, Don't Forget the People. Remember, remember, the person that you're right across from, the person that you're interacting with, is a person as well. I know you're headed to help out this, this community. I know you're headed to this particular church meeting for some really great thing that you're doing. But the person in front of you you may just need you to have a little conversation before you get to the big meeting. That's it. You're here today, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You've never accepted him as Lord and Savior. If that's you, pray this prayer for me. Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. I know you came for me. I know you lived for me. I know you died for me. I know on the third day you rose again to the dead. Today I confess that you're Lord. I think my heart to draw to the dead. Therefore, today, I'm saved. Is the right cathedral, building God's kingdom, and you will victory go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for your word today. We long to serve and please you in all we say and do. Help us to hide your word in our hearts and to use it as a guide unto our path. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Go in God's grace until we meet again for Sunday service and Tuesdays for Bible study from 7.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. 
be sure to check out our website for more information about our ministry. God bless you. And remember, you're dismissed from this service, but never dismissed from God's presence.